Blessings and welcome to your program, Shalom, Shalom. And today we're continuing with our series of the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. Last week we started talking about them and we talked about faith and healing. Amen. And then faith and wisdom and knowledge. We did wisdom and knowledge. And faith. And faith. Mm -hmm. so, um, so now, today, we're going to start talking about healing. Amen, Dexter? Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So let's pray. Father, we just love you today. We come to you. We're talking about the precious gifts of the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit, just come and take over, not only here, but in everyone's home or wherever they are listening in the name of Jesus. We want only your truth, Lord, and we want to be activated in walking in step with you, Holy Spirit, and being led by you in all things in our life. We surrender to you radically and completely today. And we can't wait for you to teach us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, the gifts of the Spirit, um, we're teaching about them because that's what Jesus said. He went up to the Father and he said, I'm going to give you the gift of the Holy Spirit, so it's better that I leave because the Holy Spirit now will be the one who fills you and leads you in everything you do. In fact, even when the Holy Spirit gets the commands from heaven, he's the one who goes up, gets them, and brings them back down to us. So if we know that, we know the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our lives is very important. And we talked about the gifts of the Holy Spirit in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. The purpose of them is to edify the church, and they're also used in evangelism, where the power of the gospel is demonstrated, as Paul said. He's not going to preach the gospel unless it was with power by the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And what Paul did was always demonstrate the gospel by preaching it, and then the Holy Spirit would release the gifts, whether that was healing, miracles, a word of knowledge, wisdom, it didn't matter. Paul was filled with all of them as Jesus was. And so we want to um, start where we left off, which is a beautiful gift, which is healing. And there's actually a lot in the Bible about scriptures to release healing. And of course, James chapter 5, you're all aware of that scripture. That says, if anyone's sick in the church, this is why you need to be part of the body of the church, call the elders, they'll anoint you with oil, and by the prayer of faith, that person will recover when the elders lay hands and anoint the, per the person who's sick with oil. So it's given as a model in James chapter 5 of how to release healing. We see that not only Jesus laid hands on people and they were made well, but also in Acts, they laid hands on people and they were made well, as well as the 72 that went out that Jesus ordained to go out and do healing and deliver all this people from demons. They also laid hands on people and they recovered. All right, so healing. Let's look at a foundational scripture for that, which is Mark 16. And this one is very important because there's a lot of people who like to teach that not only, are, you know, the gifts were dead, they died with the apostles, which of course is false. We've seen all the nine gifts of the Spirit functioning in our own ministries, and we've seen it in others. So I can tell you just as a personal testimony that the Holy Spirit and the ministry of the Holy Spirit, which is what Jesus gave us when he went back to the Father, without it we'd be helpless against the devil. Come on, let's face it. So the gifts of the Spirit, of course, are active today. And Mark 16 proves that it's for everyone. That's why I really love the scripture. It's not just for apostles, not just for the evangelists, but it's for everyone. Listen to what it says. Verse 17. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. This is for those who believe, not for the disciples. Jesus is talking to the disciples, giving them the Great Commission, and telling them, this is the people that become followers of mine. This will happen to them. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. This is really beautiful, because this is extending the ministry, of course, to all believers, which is what 1 Corinthians chapter 12 says. It's for all believers, as the captain of the ship, the Holy Spirit, distributes the gifts out. That's what's really important. We know that. The Holy Spirit is the captain of the ship. He decides who, what, when, how the gifts are distributed through the body of Christ. So, it says, so then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, which is a real key to release a lot of the gifts. They are released through your preaching of the gospel. And listen to what it says. They went out preaching everywhere, 
the Lord working with them and confirming the word, the gospel, through the accompanies miracle signs and wonders. Amen. The end of the book of Mark, which is a beautiful way of telling all believers, listen, huh. everyone in the body can carry the gifts of the Spirit, and everyone can lay hands and have someone healed. We've had it in our ministry. We've had it in so many other people's ministries. Healings, miracles, words of knowledge, words of wisdom, gifts of faith. Boy, those are beautiful when they come. You just know it. It's like the Spirit falls and you have faith to call for that mountain to be cast into the sea when the gift of faith arises upon you. All these gifts, again, are ministered by the Holy Spirit. Let's just see this in action in Acts 3.6. <clears throat> I love this. So um, Peter and John are going to the temple in verse 3, and they see someone who's asking alms, someone who's begging. He's a lame man who's been lame from <laughs> his mother's womb, and he's been carried around the town. And so the lame man, um, and fixing his eyes on him, it says in verse 4 with John, Peter said, look at us. So this lame man is begging and they're passing by, and they stop. So he gave, the, the beggar gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them, because he was asking for alms, okay? Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. There's a key. There's power in the name of Jesus. To what? Release the gift of healing. So he says, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And he, so he's addressing the very symptoms. He couldn't walk, and he's addressing it in faith so that knowing that these legs are just going to be filled with new muscles, new ligaments, strength, whatever is needed will miraculously happen. Listen to what happens. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. So there's the act of faith. Because if you don't have faith, you're like, I'm not going to get up. Well, no. The man reached his hand out, Peter reached his hand out, and pulled him up. This is an act of faith. And immediately, his feet and ankle bones received strength. There's a release of the resurrection power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. It's being released into his legs. You can just picture the amazement. As, and you can many times hear this the power of the Holy Spirit. As things creak or this or that, you can actually hear the power being released. And listen to this. This is not a slow healing. This is actually a miracle because it's immediate. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the table, temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. So I, think, I forget, this was like, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 years that this man had sat there at the gate and begged, and now he's walking. Yes, Maris. As you were talking about this, the Lord reminded me of uh, our sister Janet. She has faith. For miracles. Amen. Remember the story she was telling us that there was a preacher that came to her church. Oh, yes. And yes. he said that he was going to pray for miracles. Yes. <laughs> so she decided she wanted to be right next to him because she wanted to see the miracles that would take place. Yep. So she had faith in her. Those who hunger and thirst for his kingdom and righteousness will be filled. And this is what I love. So she got up right next to the pastor. Yes, I remember the story. It was very good. And then, like, people's legs grew out. People got healed miraculously. And she got to witness it right next to him. Why? Because she was hungry for the gifts of the Spirit. Did you know that there's a scripture that says, earnestly desire the gifts of the Spirit and earnestly desire the greater gifts? Did you know that's in the Word of God? So earnestly desiring to walk in step with the Spirit, to be one with the Holy Spirit and walking with Him and being led by Him, hearing His voice, this is all things we're to hunger for. And you know, Dexter, when she was telling me, she had a sense of expectancy. Yes. Faith. Faith. She wanted to be on the first road to see what God was doing. 
Yes. So just that was injecting faith into the situation and into the atmosphere. The same as this layman. Yes. Did you hear what happened? Yeah. The whole city had an outburst of praise of God. Hmm. There's making it ripe for the gospel. And, you know, let's, let's look at this. Even the pastor on Sunday, I love this, because we're in a new church and in a little alcove over the right, many people have miraculously been healed. And we had our first Sunday in this church in which great healing has happened in the past. And the pastor, who was a pastor of that church in the past, came and spoke to us. And what did he say, Marisol, about that? About the miracles? That the Lord was going to continue to do them. And, and he spoke in faith that we would do even greater miracles. And there was a well that many people saw, uh, living waters right there. And Marisol saw it too. And this well of living waters is just what really, let's face it, God wants this to happen. And here's what the pastor said. I, I, I don't quickly forget things that get etched onto my mind. Listen, if you want someone new to come into the church and have their heart open up that God is real, because remember, in Hebrews it says, first of all, we must believe that he is God and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. This is in the book of Hebrews. So this is what our friend did, mm -hmm. diligently seeking that. But this is what the pastor said. Many got saved because of the demonstration of healing. Many people brought their very sick friends who were not believers at the time to this very church. And once they got healed... Guess what? They were open completely to the gospel. Why? Because they saw that God is real. The demonstration of the gospel with power, as Paul said. And he said hundreds and hundreds and hundreds got saved after they got healed. So don't forget, healing ministry is a very powerful part of releasing the kingdom of God into people so they have faith. And they know God is real. Remember, Hebrews says, we must believe that he is God and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And then all of a sudden, people are ready for the gospel. Yes. You know, I remember he said that, he mentioned that his church grew 20 to 25% every, every year. year. For what, 20 years? For 20 years. And he said that a lot of his evangelism and a lot of that growth was because of healings. Yes. And by the way, we want to invite you. The address of our church is 111 Olive Street. It's on 6th Street and Olive. Olive. In Burbank, California. So it's 111 Olive. And it's right at 6th Street and Olive in Burbank, California. In Burbank. And yes. it's called The Gathering Place in our pastor is Rick Wright. It's an amazing place. If you need healing, come. The Lord will Touch you in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Just Google the gathering place and Pastor Rick Wright in Los Angeles, of course. And we've been historically in Hollywood. And then you'll be able to find the address on the website. Amen. Um, and confirm it in case you didn't get that. All right. You know, and again, the Spirit just fell on me. All nine of the gifts, the Holy Spirit wants me to remind you, are to function through all of us. I want you to get that. He's fallen so many times lately on me to remind people of this. All nine of the gifts, you read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and you will see all nine of the gifts can flow through you as long as you are hungry and walking in step with the Spirit. Because listen, the Spirit's going to look for who's hungry, who's bold, and who wants to go out and proclaim the gospel? Who wants to go out and heal the sick? Who has compassion in their heart? Who has the fruit of the Spirit flowing deeply through them? Because remember, many of the miracles of Jesus were done first by his compassion. Then the compassion released the miracles. The Spirit's still on me. Remember, those who diligently seek me, God wants people like that including diligently seeking the gifts to flow through you. Do not stop. The word promises in Jeremiah 29, 13, if you seek me with all of your heart, the Lord says, I will be found by you. And believe me, finding God means you're going to find and be filled with the Holy Spirit. 
Finding God means you're going to find the Holy Spirit moving through you and witnessing to you that you're saved. Finding God means when you have compassion for someone, you can grab their hand and pray and have faith that God is going to move because he promises to in his word. You're going to completely radically change when you walk in step with the Spirit. You're going to learn who the Holy Spirit is and you're going to fall in love with him as I have. Because believe me, when he falls in you, you know this is an exciting time. Something awesome is going to happen. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is active in this room right now. And I get so excited when that happens. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. This scripture is packed with a whole bunch of the nine gifts. Listen to this. To another, the working of miracles. Huh. And who doesn't want miracles like in the book of Acts and Jesus demonstrated? To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. Oh, my goodness. This is one that I... I practice, and this is one that says if you practice it, it will become more active in you. That's in Hebrews. You're supposed to practice these gifts. You're going to see this in a second. You've got to get this. Even if you don't see the manifestation of laying hands on someone being healed immediately, you keep laying hands in faith and praying healing over them. You keep at it. And eventually it will come. Heidi Baker said for a full year I forget whether it was the blind or the deaf or whatever. She laid hands on them, believing they would be healed, and for a full year, nothing happened. And then when it broke out, like living waters, it broke out. And God tests us sometimes if we're going to be faithful in pursuing Him with all of our heart and pursuing the gifts with all of our heart. That's how I got baptized with the Holy Spirit. That's how Marisol got baptized with the Holy Spirit. We pursued it directly with the Lord. Now, to another, different kinds of tongues, which was the first gift I remember seeing manifest in me. <laughs> I've told that testimony. To another, the interpretation of tongues, which I love because then it becomes the equivalent of prophecy and edifies people. Wow, that is packed, Marisol. So again, we just read Mark 16, 17, and 18, and we see some of those gifts are in there, already said that all believers will have this. And the one that's first listed in there is that we will speak with other tongues. So that was the first thing that manifested in me. And if you read in the book of Acts, that is also the first thing that manifested in a lot of believers when they were first baptized, as they spoke in other tongues. And that is what is labeled in Mark 16, verses 17 and 18, that these signs will follow all who believe in me when you proclaim the gospel to me. They will speak in other tongues. So I'm sorry, but I'm one of those who believes that the Bible says that I'm going to pursue it. And, and it happened. And I am so thankful. My gift of tongues, Marisol knows, I speak in tongues all throughout the day. Why? Because even in Jude, it says it raises up your faith. And it keeps me connected to the Holy Spirit, honoring him, which means I hear his voice much more clearly and quickly. I speak in tongues because the word says it edifies us. Now, so let's look at these. Romans 12, 6. Let's start with this first. I love the Holy Spirit. It says, this is important that we understand that, that having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, so we all have the gifts that can flow through us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. If ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches and teaching. By the way, this is not a comprehensive list. You have to look at this list, the one in Ephesians, the one in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. They're all over the gifts. He who exhorts in exhortation, that's like a really good exhorter pastor. You know what I'm talking about. He, he gets you fired up to pursue God and to change. He who gives with liberality. Bet you didn't know that. There's kingdom givers that God has preordained that are blessed in their businesses and other things, and they are kingdom givers because they tithe and give love offerings whenever the Lord asks them to. It is one of our gifts, too, is as kingdom givers, and I love it. I am thankful. 
He who leads with diligence. So there's a gift of leadership. You will find that. You will just naturally find people. They will be elders in your church or otherwise who are natural leaders. And the Lord then pours the anointing down through them. And then what the Lord pours, then they share with the body. And many go and then in the same direction in unity, performing God's calling and purposes for that church. Yes, sweetie. And you know, in the gift of leadership, you were telling me last night about how God anoints people to lead different amounts of people. Some people are anointed to lead 10. Yes, some, some a hundred, some a thousand. thousand. Right, and we see that even with him giving power over cities or giving yes. them different talents, one talent, five talents, 10 talents. Yes, Marisol. And, and I thought that was very powerful. Yes. Because some, we're not all, we're, we're all called to lead in different capacities, in different spheres. Yeah, sometimes you're just a leader over your family, but that's yeah. so important. I'm talking to you husbands, I hope, that we're called into that. We understand that as priests and kings unto our God, that we're called to do that play a very key spiritual leadership role in our family of leadership. And he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. I wanted to read that to you because it says everyone is to carry gifts. And everyone is to bring them forth into the body for edification of each other. And these gifts are beautiful also outside the body as we are talking about to proclaim the gospel. All right. First, 2 Peter 1.20. Not always the first scripture people will read about for prophecy, but I want people to understand that when you prophesy, we need to understand that we're speaking from God directly. And I love this. It says, verse 20, knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of man. I don't get this, work it up myself and then give man's wisdom. No. But holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. And just like last week in the Arabic program, Marisol had a powerful prophecy about the Lord releasing a revival in northern Egypt and how that would even spread throughout the territories to southern Egypt, to the surrounding countries. And I could tell as I was teaching that she started manifesting because the Spirit was all over her. By the way, the more you walk and step with the Spirit, this is a word for some of you, the more you will see the movement of the Spirit even in others and recognize it as the truth because your own Spirit will be fired up inside you by the Holy Spirit. So prophecy must be in the truth and it must be by the Spirit. That's why we pray Psalm 141, verse 3. We ask the Lord, and we're going to do this right now, guard my mouth that I only speak true prophecies as filled and led by you, Holy Spirit, through your gift and your gift only, and in your timing and to the person you ordain it to be. Otherwise, guard my mouth and silence my tongue in the name of Jesus. I ask this in my own free will in Jesus' name. Yes, sweetie. Okay. Not everyone who prophesies walks in the office of the prophet. Amen? The word says that we are to all prophesy. Yes. So it and is we in, can, and we can all prophesy, okay. says that in 1 Corinthians yeah. chapters 12 through 14, and in, but in order. But we have to understand the difference and, and know that. A prophet is called directly from God. Amen, Dexter? Amen. So you can be prophetic, and not necessarily be a prophet. And, and Amen, Dexter? Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. There are the offices in Ephesians, the five offices. You know them, apostle, prophet, teacher, evangelist, and pastor. Those are direct callings from the Lord himself to the person. Very important. Read that. Another person does not ordain you in that. They can recognize the gift and the calling in you, but they're not the ones who call you into it. The Lord yes. does directly. Important. All right, important that you know that because that's what the scripture said and that's what happened to Marisol and that's what happened to me in our offices. 1 Corinthians 14, 4. Again, you can seek it. Remember, knock, seek, ask. You know, do you think God doesn't want you to know what you're called to be? 
what your calling is and you think God doesn't want you to know what gifts are going to flow through you? You think God doesn't want you to know what your calling is, what your sphere of influence is? Of course he wants you to know. That's why you knock, seek, and ask until you find the answers. When we and were... if you diligently seek those answers and ask for that wisdom, of course he's going to give it to you as his child because he wants you to fulfill your calling. Yes? Remember when we were dating that the Lord gave me a prophetic word of knowledge of the gifts that you will walk in? Yeah, and can I just see, add to that? We're going to give this testimony. We're going to have to continue this teaching next week, but this is important so you understand. I was not yet baptized with the Holy Spirit. I want everyone to understand that. I was a prodigal son who had just returned and given his life to the Lord, okay? But I was not yet baptized with the Holy Spirit. I'm sitting in the car with her at Kroger's. We always went out to eat, and then we talked about the Lord all night, it seemed like, until we, I dropped her off, and she went back home. We did this night after night. I'm sitting in the parking lot at Kroger's, and all of a sudden, I get this fiery dart from the enemy, and it's, listen, you're unequally yoked. You, you need to ask the Lord to break off this relationship, because she's walking in the Spirit. She's ran the deliverance tent for Carlos Anacondi in South America. People were levitated, delivered people, did all that. And I'm like, I don't even have any of the gifts evident in me, Lord. So I was feeling sorry for myself. The fiery dark came, and here's what I said to myself in my heart to the Lord. I prayed. I said, Lord, I've realized something. I, wanna, I told you I want to obey your word. And the word says that we're not to be unequally yoked with another person. We weren't yet married. I said, I'm asking you to go find a godly man that's filled with the Spirit because I don't have any of these gifts of the Spirit that she's talking about. I said this only in my heart as a silent prayer to God. As God is my witness, the Spirit is with me right now. <laughs> she all of a sudden turns to me and says, the Lord heard your prayer, and he wants you to know that the following gifts are going to flow through you. It freaked me out, as God is my witness. But it made God very real. And it made me hungry for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I've told you that story. It took months. <laughs> but boy, I kept diligently pursuing it. And then I finally surrendered to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. You know the story one day when they went to see a prophet. I said, Holy Spirit, in Benny Hinn's book, Good Morning, Holy Spirit, it says that I'm going to have fellowship with you. I don't know you, but I ask you to come and pray for me. Because I want to have prayer, effective prayers that they hear from the prophet. Because Marisol went with two friends. And the Holy Spirit broke out in tongues through me. And baptized me right then and there. When I invited him, I'm telling you this because I vigorously pursued him and even yelled at the Lord. Beat the wall. I was angry that none of the gifts were manifesting. Okay? I want you to understand that. But when I finally surrendered all to him and said... Whatever you want to do, whenever you want to do it, and I invited the Holy Spirit to come, that's when he, he manifested and filled me and baptized me. I think that's a good place to end. Yes. Marisol, I want you to pray again for people, because this is so important, please, the Spirit's on me, for people to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, because you're the one who prayed for me, Marisol, and laid hands on me. So will you please do that? Oh, and then Lord. activate the gifts. Father, you're so faithful, Father. And, Father, your word says that we are to pursue the baptism of the Holy Spirit and to be baptized in fire and in the Spirit. And in power. And in power, Lord. Yes. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those that want to receive the baptism that your Holy Spirit will go and invade their lives. And as Luke 11 says, just ask the Father yes. for the gift of the Holy Spirit and he will give ask it to you. So we ask you, give Father. It to you because he's a loving Father who wants to give you the Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the helper. He is our helper. Jesus went to the right hand of the Father and he sent the Holy Spirit to be our helper. And, that, and he is to help us to know and to follow Jesus in the power of the resurrection. So, Father, I ask you in Jesus' name to baptize them, 
Father and I just lay hands. We lay our spiritual hands, hands both of us, them. Marisol and I, on in as Paul Jesus did. Name. To and in the name of Jesus, receive the gift yes, of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. In the name of Jesus and Christ of Nazareth. Of and we activate the giftings that are within you, that the Holy Spirit has given you in the measure that he has given it to you in Jesus', Jesus name, name, according to his perfect will and to the purposes and the calling in your life in Jesus' name. And now I'm just going to give yes. you a word of wisdom. Just start walking with the Holy Spirit. Just believe he's there and he's filled you and start walking in and expect the gifts to manifest. And start laying your hands on the sick, praying for the sick. You just obey God what he commands in the word. And that's all we have for today. So next week we will continue on this and everyone be blessed. Shalom, shalom in Jesus' name. This has been your program, Shalom, Shalom, with your host, Dr. Marisol Pelser and my beloved husband, Reverend Dexel Pelser. God bless you and we'll see you next time. Amen. <laughs>